Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This next video is a video on how I got into running and also how to join the running club. So I'll timestamp them below if you want to flick through different sections or just watch the whole thing through. And don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. So my story, how I got into running. So going all the way back when I was 12 year old, I used to compete in the school's cross country championships and it used to always start at Annick and that was the first round. You would compete against the local schools in your area. So I joined Mop of Harriers when I was 12 year old. That's what, 18 years ago now, because I'm 30, getting old. It's, it's crazy thinking back how long ago that was, but I had six years out of the sport. I actually heard about Mop of Harriers when I won the local cross country race because a girl who was the year older called Laura Waitman, who you might know, she was a finalist in London 2012, the Olympics, in the 1500 metres. So she was a year above me at school and she used to always win. When I won the under 13s category, I got talking to her and she introduced us to a guy called Mike Bateman. So Mike Bateman's a long-standing member of Mop of Harriers and he's a great guy, he's, he's getting on a little bit now. So when I got introduced to Mike Bateman, he asked me to come along to the club at half seven on a Monday night, just to see how I got on. I had a word with my parents and my mum took us across to Mop of Harriers on a Monday. There was a guy called Tony Ward who I actually got put with initially. And then I worked my way up to Mike's group. I was there for many years and then I started training with my now coach, Jim Alder. Jim won the marathon in 1966 and that was in Jamaica. It was quite a famous race because he got sent the wrong way with about 600 metres left just coming into the stadium. And then he managed to get back on track and he was second and he overtook this guy who was now in the lead of about 200 metres left, so he nearly actually lost the race because the royal family arrived and everyone rushed to see them. Meanwhile, the pride of Scotland, Jim Alder, led in the last stages of the marathon. Bill Adcox, England, a challenging second. Calmly poised as ever, the statue may have misled Alder. The gallant Scott re-entered the stadium by the wrong gate and might have lost the race if he hadn't realised his mistake just in time. As it was, Adcox soon lost his lead. That's how to enjoy summer in Jamaica. Run 26 miles with a thermometer in the 90s. Birmingham's Bill Adcox says, take care of the feet and the medals will come sooner or later. A marathon to remember and a grand win for Scotland's Jim Alder. Yeah, I ran for Morpeth for a good four or five years until I was under 17, top year. Built that base up. I got down to about four minutes eight for 1500 metres and 201 for 800 metres. Competed against the best in England and also finished quite high up in the national cross country when I was under 17. And I also represented Northumberland for quite a few years. But when I got to 17 year old, I kind of lost, lost the love of the sport almost. I think it's because I got a full time job and, you know, you start going out and drinking and life gets in the way and I focused on bodybuilding, believe it or not, for six and a half years. I got up to, I think I was 13 stone two, 13 stone three, which took us a lot of years to put the size on because I was always quite a skinny person. So yeah, I was, I was sort of doing a bit of strongman, a bit of powerlifting, a bit of bodybuilding. And then I did a marathon for charity for Huntington's and I just fell in love with the sport again. Just the camaraderie, the friends I'd made and doing it for charity was just a, such a nice thing to do. I raised quite a lot of money for Huntington's and that's kind of what got us through the marathon. When I was on mile 20 and really struggling, I just kept thinking of the money and my parents at the finish line and what how, how it would change people's lives. So some of the benefits of joining a new club. Well, the first one, meeting new friends. When you run with people, for an hour straight, let's say, 
you talk about a lot of things and it's not very often that you sit down with even some of your best friends for an hour and, and sit and talk one to one and you get to know a lot of things about people they tell you that ups and downs and you know you make so, some of the friends I've made in running are like friends for life a good example of that would be Jordan Scott I, I never even knew him at school but then when I started running we used to run every day and you get really close to some people and he ended up coming to my wedding and there's other people like Carl Taylor who I started running with when I was younger Kieran Headley, you know, Adam Pratt, Thomas Innes. There's, there's lots and lots of people I could sit here and name them. Let's just say you go for a coffee with one of your best friends who's not a runner. You might talk about things for about an hour and then you go home and then you might not see each other for a few weeks. Whereas some of your running friends, I mean, you're getting four hours plus a week of that one-on-one -on -one time, getting to know them. and So competition. Joining a club is really good if you're quite a competitive person. If you're in a race and you see that mop vest just ahead of you, or your local club vest just ahead of you, it might push you on to try and beat your teammates. If you get quite serious in your running and you enter team races like the road relay champs or the six stage or 12 stage road relays, you've actually got a team of 12 people. There's six long legs, six short legs, and you're running with your teammate and it just pushes you on knowing that you're not just running for yourself, you're also running for the club. I've just touched on it before there as well, if you run for charity, it's, it's really good because let's say you're struggling at mile 20 in a marathon, if you're doing it for a greater purpose and raising money for charity, you don't want to let, let everyone down who's donated. You kind of think of the charity first. I know when I did my first marathon, I was really, really struggling at mile 18 to 20 and knowing that I had my family at the finish line, I had money on the line, I was doing it for charity and it would change people's lives. You just push through it and it's amazing how much more your body can actually take. When you think you're struggling, your mind starts thinking you're struggling, but your body can keep going for more than you think. It's just a matter of persevering. It's always best if you want to push yourself and really run fast times and become a better runner, it's always better to have competition. You look at some of these world records where they've got pacemakers and they've got people pushing them right to the finish line. You just get the most out of yourself. The third one is racing. So when you join a club, it's you, you get access to more races. A lot of people, when they're first starting out, just do park runs, which is fine, but that's only 5K. When you join a club, you could do any track race. You could even do a field event. We have track leagues where you can go along and do your chosen event. Let's say it's a 400 metres, but you might get put in the shot put, the javelin. I've mentioned earlier the 12-stage road relays are a great one because you, you're running with 12 people in one team and you're all going there to try your hardest. And I think when you pull on that club vest... It also gives you a little bit of, not only pride, but you want to work hard and look good and push yourself. In training, I could run quite well, but then I always find I get a little bit extra when I pull on the club vest. Let's say you're in a race where it's not a team and you're in a race that's just an individual type race. If you see a mop of, or your local club vest ahead of you, it might push you on to try and beat your teammates. Or when you do actually make friends in the North East, you might see other guys from different teams. So how to join a running club? Best thing I could probably suggest would be to Google local running clubs in your area whether you live down south or northeast like i do i know mob of harriers have got their own website so you can click on that you'll usually find a contact so the best thing to do would just be to ring them and ask what night of the week they train and then just go along most clubs will welcome any member mob of train at half six on a monday night so if you ring up the number to talk to talk to the secretary they will quite often just say oh come along on monday and we'll pick a group for you to train with so it doesn't matter how good you are how slow you are how fast you are there'll be a group in that running club for you and you'll get put with people of similar ability you're not going to turn up and get put with the fastest people and they're just going to leave you that's not very enjoyable is it the club will ask you what your pbs are or what sort of shape you're in and they can start you off at the bottom if you find you're beating everyone in that group you can always move up to the next group in the northeast i know there's quite a lot of clubs there's ashington there's annick there's mop of harriers you've got the poly but i would say if you're in the northeast Morpeth is a really good club, quite a big one, and they've got quite a lot of elite runners. So if you are quite a good runner and you're looking for a, a fast club to join, I would highly recommend Morpeth. You'll find if you join a club like Asherton, for example, one of my friends has just joined Asherton and they didn't actually enter some people in, in the North East Championships. Recently, I was in Nottingham on a training course. I knew I was going to be down there for a few days and I had no one to train with. So I actually got in touch with Nottingham AC went on the website, typed it in and found a contact and I managed to ring this, this guy and he said, oh, just come along on the Tuesday and we'll do a training session. So I went along and I met loads of new people. I'd done a training session and there was a guy called Alistair Watson and a young guy as well called Finley. He was an 800 guy and Alistair was a really, really good 10k runner. He's actually just broke the 
over 40s or 45 um, age category for the 10k. I'm sure I ran 29 to 30 for 10k, which is ridiculous. So yeah, I went down there on a training course by myself and I ended up training with Nottingham. If you ring them up and want to join the club, they'll be happy to have you. And honestly, it's probably be, it'll probably be the best thing you do in terms of running because... Like I say, you'll meet friends for life. You'll, you'll understand how to train. It'll just better yourself as a runner. So step four would be structure. So if you join a running club and you haven't got any clue on how to train, instead of going online and downloading or paying money for training schedules that probably aren't best for you, why not actually join a club and get a coach? A coach is invaluable. He or she will give you a schedule, give you some structure. They'll talk you through long runs, easy runs, what type of session is to do for your goal races. If it's 10Ks you want to focus on, your coach can give you a 10K type schedule. If you want to try do track and work on 400 meters, I'm sure there'll be coaches out there that can give you strength and conditioning and speed workouts. So that's a huge one really, getting a coach. And it won't cost any money. If you join a club, the coach will be free. You don't need to go online and pay hundreds of pounds for these people who probably aren't even, probably haven't even done training courses. So whatever your goals are, big or small, if you just want to keep fit and meet new friends or try and go all the way to the Olympics, I highly recommend being part of a running club. If you can get in fairly early, or if any older people are watching this and they've got kids, I highly recommend them join as early as possible because some of the best runners usually join around 15, 16, maybe even earlier because it takes a lot of years to build up that base. Running's almost like an apprenticeship. It can take five years to get good. You don't want to just go from doing zero to 100 real quick. You want to start at zero and work your way slowly up and up and up. Some of the people that are professionals are on 100 mile a week. You can't just go from doing nothing to being a 100 mile a week runner. It can take up to six years just to get up to 80 mile a week, never mind 100. When you see these professionals on TV, they've quite often been running for 10 plus years. I've always said in running, consistency is key. You're best off just being consistent, keeping your sessions going, not killing yourself in every session. Just give it 95%. So I hope this video has been helpful. And if you can leave a comment below on what running club you run for, or if you have any questions about joining a running club or around the topic in general, just leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>